Good afternoon and welcome to Northside Baptist Church. This is the amazing Northside Baptist Church Kids Choir behind me. We are made up of four-year-olds all the way through fifth graders. And we are so excited to share our presentation this afternoon with you of Joyride. It is a special musical about a summer day trip down to the beach with some campers. And the lessons we're learning are from the book of Philippians. And one exciting thing about our songs in this musical is they are straight from the book of Philippians. So over the course of the semester, these kids behind me and the leaders have learned more than 30 verses from Philippians, which has been awesome. So I'm excited as they grow up and they hear pastors and teachers speak from Philippians. Those songs are going to go off in their head and they're going to know exactly what those verses are. So that's exciting. I did want to let you know also in the program you'll see our list of um, choir members. And we had one error when we went to printing. We went to printing before we had had every kid finish saying their verse. For the first time, we've never had this happen before, but for the first time, every kid in our choir said the memory verse this semester, which was actually three verses. So a couple of our friends didn't get their names marked, and I wanted to give them a shout out. So that was a really big deal because our verse was long, Philippians 4, 4 through 7, and every child up here on stage said that. Even our four-year-olds did it. So wanted to give them a special shout-out because the program went to print before we could mark that. But they have worked hard. We're excited to share with you. Um, before we get started, I want to give you a chance to wave to your friends that you came to see. So go ahead and get your waves out. They are so excited. I love it. I love it. I told them in the hallways that you were so excited to wave to them. So now you can put your waving hands away and get ready to buckle up for a joy ride. We are excited. I'm going to open us up in prayer, and then we're going to get started. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for um, this stage full of people and for my leaders and helpers all around this building. Thank you for the work that they've done for many months now, not just to learn some songs and learn some choreography and put on a program, but God, to teach about what the Word of God says and to impart that into the hearts of these um, boys and girls up on stage. So God, now as we get to share this program with our friends and family, would you bless it? We know that the Bible says that your Word does not return void, so we are excited to see what the power of these songs are going to hold for us this weekend. Um, would you help us to do our very best? Would you help us to remember all that we've worked on? Um, so that your message could be shared loud and clear without distraction. We love you, and we are grateful for the privilege to get to do this. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, summer campers! Are you ready for an epic joy ride on the California coast? Hop on in and let's get riding!
beautiful day for a ride. The wind in your hair, the sun on your face, the bugs in your mouth. This seems like a perfect spot to pull over. You didn't really eat a bug, did you? Because I think I frown on that here, and I don't want to fill out the paperwork. Can we run down to the beach, Mr. Phil? I don't see why not. Make sure you have sunblock. I have five different kinds in my preparedness pack if you need some. It's all fun and games till someone gets a sunburn. I'm going to run ahead. I need to scout my next location for my new blockbuster movie from Madison Productions. Madison Productions, your production company is just your first name? Yeah, well, Disney and Universal are already taken, so... I'm coming with you. I feel an adventure coming on. Oh, great. Go with your gut. I'll follow you. The amazing cannonball slides through the brush as he awaits his next adventure. <coughs> I just feel like the bug is still in there. Open up. Let me see. I have Buzzy Gone. Would you prefer an all-natural organic tea from Sweden? I love the beach. I'm going to build a sand castle. Maybe we'll join you. What do you say, Lily, Liam? No, thanks. I'm grinding the game. I don't like the beach. Sand, salt water, bleh. If it's hand sanitizer you want, I got it. Or gloves. I have those too. Well, I think you're all going to want to join us. This week, we're going to talk about joy, learning verses from the book of Philippians. Paul is writing to the Philippians, and he starts the letter something like this. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Grace and peace to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Grace and peace to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. And in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. I
to carry the sand, carry the sand. Perky much. Sand can not be that exciting. You're joking, but you're going to notice that Paul talks a lot about joy in this book. I mean a lot. So we're going to talk about joy. Sounds amazing. I love joy. I think I'm going to be sick. Ooh, you've come to the right spot. Do you need any big vapor up? Got some right here. Cowabunga! Sorry guys, gotta go. Cannonball is cinematic gold. Ever the adventure, he's drawn toward the sea. I'm coming too. Wanna go jump the waves with me, Lily, Kaylin? Question, has the Coast Guard scouted for great white sharks in this region lately? Uh... Better safe than sorry. I think I'll stay on Sandcastle Construction with Lily and Liam. Not Liam. I'm constructing larger worlds in a game that you could never fathom. Okay. Watch out for the undertow! I think they'll be okay, Caleb. Never hurts to be prepared. Oh, I hear you. But you know, you can't be prepared for everything, but we can trust that God is never, ever caught off guard. Later in chapter 1 of Philippians, Paul reminds us that no matter what, we can stand firm and not be frightened of anything. Our citizenship is in heaven. You know, God is continuing to build his church just like we are building this sandcastle. Too cold, too cold, too cold! Cut, let's do that again from the top, but pretend a great white shark is 
chasing you this time. Ah, a shark is chasing me. Did someone see a great white shark? I have shark spray. Never a dull moment in children's ministry. But did you know what the Bible says is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Yep, God said that the greatest commandment was to love him and show others his love. Hey, I didn't know you were listening, Liam. Like any serious gamer, you get into a rhythm. Most of the time I can still listen. My fingers know what to do. But we are not going to be able to do that without God's help. We need to pray that God will cause our love for other people to get bigger and bigger. Liam, can you look up Philippians 1.9 on that device? Sure thing. Look up Philippians 1.9. Here it is. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. It didn't happen all at once. Choices, compromises, turned our focus to ourselves. Forgot what it's all about. How did it even get this far? Where we look around and realize we've forgotten who we are. what it's all about. You guys, you'll never believe it. I just barely made it out alive. Was it a great white shark? I knew it. I was swimming, and then a huge... 
I got this CB. The air was crisp, and the unsuspecting friend was minding his own business, swimming along the crowded beach as he got tangled up by a huge beast. An octopus? The beast grabbed him and covered his eyes. You were attacked? Yes. No. Who are you? Ocean Cleanup Angels at your service. Ocean Cleanup Angels? Why are you dissing my movie? Your friend was attacked by a plastic bag. That explains the receipt in my mouth. We clean up pollution here in the ocean. Sure stinks to have garbage in the ocean. You bet. Unfortunately, trash is a big problem on our beach. We learned a verse yesterday that actually talks about garbage. Booyah. Bet you thought I couldn't tie that into the lesson. Can you remember which one it was? Wasn't it something like knowing Christ is so incredible? Nothing else can come close to comparing with it? Right. Compared to knowing Christ, even the great things in our life are as unimportant as garbage. Speaking of garbage, anybody want those plastic gloves now? I always thought these things were valuable But now I consider them worthless Because of what Christ has done Yes, everything else is worthless Pick up the trash and clean this beach. But I mean, that's Marina's job, and we don't want to take that away from her. Do we? It's okay. I like serving. I feel like it's a way to honor God. But look at the progress we're making on this sandcastle. The sea would pop more if you created a moat. Have you considered creating a moat? Actually, Philippians talks a lot about serving others. In Philippians chapter 2, 3 through 4, it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. 
rather in humility. Value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, any fellowship with the Spirit, any tenderness and compassion, Marina, it'd be a shame to waste these gloves. I'll help too. Thinking of others instead of ourselves kind of goes along with loving our neighbor as ourselves. Exactly, but easier said than done. Sometimes people are, how do I put this nicely? Not lovable. Niceness challenged. But seriously, why do I want to serve someone that's mean? Now that's a very natural reaction, but do you know the craziest thing? The Bible says that Jesus became like a servant. Jesus, who was God, though he was Lord, he humbled himself. It blows my mind. In fact, 
I may have written a rap about it. That's super cheesy, Mr. Phil. No, I think you'll like it. Challenge accepted? Okay, this rap is the entire scripture of Philippians 2, 5 through 10. Once you've learned this, you've memorized the whole passage. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his advantage. So, my rap? Uh, well, well, Mr. Phil, it was a bop! Oh, okay, I see. No, that's a good thing! Someone should go after him. Cannonball to the rescue! At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Yeah! Are you having a good time yet, Lily? I'm going to be real with you guys, but don't tell Mr. Phil, though. I don't think he'd recover. Smart. I have a problem with all this fake joy. I don't like how you all are pretending you're happy and that nothing bad ever happens. There are real problems in the world right now. You're right. There are real problems. Bad things still happen, but I believe God is still working. And joy isn't the same thing as happiness. I deal with anxiety, and some days are kind of hard. But we can go through hard situations and feel sadness, but still have God's joy. Yes, joy is resting in the knowledge that God loves us and that we can trust him. It's one of the reasons I love memorizing Bible verses so much. God brings them to mind when I'm struggling. It does make everything perfect, but knowing God has me in his hands, no matter what happens, that brings me comfort. Whatever the circumstances, and I know what it is to be in me, I have learned to be content. Whatever the circumstances, and I know what it is to have plenty.
Well, I now know what a bop is. Thank you for that. And maybe I'll publish that rap. The first of many from Mr. Philip Ians. What did you say? I might publish my rap. No, your last name is... Ians. Why? So your name is Philip Ians? Philippians? I'm not getting it. But wow, look at the sandcastle. Great job. I hope these verses from Philippians are making you think about practically living life for Christ. We've learned about serving. And that knowing Christ is much better than the other garbage we can try to fill our lives with. We've learned that joy isn't the same as happiness. Sounds like we are learning a lot. Can I tell you something that's going to blow your mind? When Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians, he was in prison. Boom. That's right. He wanted to continue pressing on to the goal of giving his life to serve the king. Not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived to my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not yet consider myself fully taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forwards to what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Achieve these things. I don't mean to say that I've already reached perfection. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things. I don't mean to say that I've already reached perfection. But I press on, I press on, I press on. But I press on, I press on.
Wow, speaking of joy, did those kids give you some joy tonight? Yes, sir. Man, y'all were, were absolutely wonderful. That just blessed me. I can't tell you how much. Of course, our greatest joy should be in the Lord, right? Isn't that right? How about, how, any of y'all here know Philippians 4, 4? Come on. Can you, do you know it in front of the microphone? See, that's the key. Go say it with you all together. Rejoice. Now, that's some good stuff right there. I think the key truth we get out of there is that we rejoice in the Lord. That's where we get our true joy from. And I know this. There's a lot of things that change in this world, isn't there? Circumstances change. And if we focus on the circumstances, they'll just rob our joy that quickly. But when we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know who never changes? He never changes. Never and do you know something else? Do you know what brings Jesus joy? Have you ever thought about that? What, what brings him joy? Well, the Bible tells us that. It says this. Now, listen to this. This is incredible. Who for the joy set before him, before Jesus, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Now, think about it. What is it that could have been so unbelievably joyful <laughs> that he would go through, he would endure the excruciating pain of the cross and the shame that he got. Well, you have to think, well, what did he not have before the cross that he had after the cross? There's really only one thing. That was you. See, until Jesus Christ was able to cry out from the cross, it is finished. The debt is paid. You were still dead in your sins. You had no hope. But because of what Jesus did, you now have hope. And the amazing thing is, he did that because a relationship with you brings him joy. I don't know about you, that just absolutely blows me away. That me, giving my life to Jesus, would bring him joy. Well, the Bible says, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for another. Jesus laid down his life for you. Now, I know some of you here, you know Jesus. Yeah, he is your Savior. But this is the other thing I know. It's easy, easy, easy to live in the circumstances of life, isn't it? It's easy to get focused on the world instead of Jesus Christ. And if the truth, if you were to tell the truth, if you were to be really transparent tonight, you would say that joy that these children were singing about, man, that's come and go. It's a hit and miss, really. Tonight, I want us to pray together for you. And there's another group here. There always is in a crowd this size. There's at least a couple who have never experienced the joy of knowing Christ. And that one song they, they sang, whatever things were gained to me, those I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, Paul writes, more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them but garbage, so that I may win Christ. Tonight for you, if you've never experienced that relationship, I want you to be honest with yourself. You're going through life, and the pleasures of the world, they're there, but they don't last, and you've had no true lasting joy. Tonight, you can experience a joy that is eternal. You see, you give Jesus joy, but he doesn't force you into a relationship with him. He leaves the door open.
but you have to come through. You have to make that decision. So tonight, listen to me. If you want to make that decision tonight to give your life to Jesus Christ, to experience a joy that is truly indescribable, and at the same time, to give the Savior, the creator of the universe, joy in a relationship with you, then I want you to pray with me right now. I'm going to say this prayer out loud. I want you to say it in your heart. But listen, don't just repeat the words. I want you to say them from your heart to the God who loves you so much that he would die for you. So let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. And if that's you, I want you to pray with me right now. Dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. And that I've blown it. And right now I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. I believe Jesus loved me so much that he died on the cross for me and that he rose again the third day. And at this very moment, this afternoon, I am turning away from my sins. I'm turning away of making life work on my standards and I'm turning completely to Jesus Christ I am surrendering to him and I want to follow him all the days of my life I want to know the joy of a relationship with Jesus Christ and I pray this in Jesus name amen now listen to me listen to me if you prayed that prayer oh man I'm a I'm going to be just up here talking to kids, talking to people. Don't you leave here without coming and speaking to me. Because there's some stuff you still need to know, right? That's important. I want to know. I'm not going to keep you here long. I know you got folks you want to see, right? I'm going to get your name and phone number. That's what I'm going to do. Then off you go. And then I'll call you later, okay? But I need to know. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, please let me know. Now, for those of you who right now don't know the joy that only Christ can give. This is what I want you to do. That song they sang, that, uh, that I count all things but garbage, that I may know Christ, that's what I want you to do. What is it that you're, that you're holding on to? I want you to write that down and say, Lord, I turn from that. The one I want most of all is you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Well, thank y'all for being here tonight. Now, I want to introduce y'all to somebody. She's the one that was in your director. She's the director of the children's musical worship drama. And she has done a great job for, like, what? 26 musicals. Wow. Well, was I in one of your musicals? Because <laughs> that is a long time. I, I, I'm going to give the microphone to Katie, but I just want to say this. She, she does an incredible job, her whole team. Some of these people, I think, have been with her almost the whole time, or at least a few of them. I know David has, wherever he is. But anyway, but the, uh, she does an incredible job. And I want you to hear something. They come in. Now, all these people have jobs, and they say, but they come in to church on Sunday morning. And then they come back on Sunday evening to spend time with these children so they'll know the truths of God's word and can live them. That is a real sacrifice, and I am so thankful for you doing that. For my grandchildren, but for all these kids. Thank you, Katie. We really are so grateful. I'm so thankful for our team. I've got leaders all throughout the room, down here, down front backstage, on the stage for some of them. Um, but it truly is a joy. When we say we love getting to do this, we really do. Um, it, like we've been talking all weekend with these kids about it's a lot of work to do what you do, but the joy is just amazing. And to see children that start with us at four go all the way through and then grow up, and now we've got our leaders in training, our LITs that are all over leading choreography and running cameras and sound cues and We've got a high school drama director, and it's, it's awesome to see the, the seeds that are planted and watered at this stage and then grow to fruition, and they want to serve. And one of our leaders in training told me this weekend, it's just the best thing to get to help other kids 
learn to love Jesus the way I did in kids' choir. And I thought, yes, that is it. That's why we're here. So thank you to my team. Thank you to you parents and grandparents who bring your children every Sunday afternoon. We know that they can't drive themselves here. So thank you for pausing your Sunday afternoon to bring them and to play that music in the car over and over and over and over and over again. Um, we will dismiss your kids to you at the stairs. They know that the only person allowed to jump off the front of the stage is Cannonball. He's the only one. Everybody else is going to go down the stairs. He's specially trained. You're right. So you can meet our directors at the stairs, and then we welcome all of you to join us out these double doors in the multi-purpose gym is um, our reception that we'd love for you to join us. Take pictures, enjoy the cake and punch with your kiddos, and um, we will see you tomorrow for worship. Thank you so much. Lindy?